Ciudad Flats, Nevada. The time, 6.15 a.m. The climax of arduous planning. Operation A-bomb test underway. Detonation minus two minutes. Military personnel from Buck Private to top-ranking brass. Men from research and news services move into position. The bomb-carrying plane makes its initial run. Radar with eyes that never sleep. Special equipment go into operation. All orders are carried out with split-second precision. Warning is given to all commercial aircraft to stay out of the test area. Detonation minus 70 seconds. Planes take to the air, carrying sensitive instruments and nuclear scientists, ready to record the radioactivity from the closest possible vantage point. Detonation minus 40 seconds. The bomb-carrying plane nears the target. Tension mounts as all members of the flight crew anticipate the task to pinpoint the bomb on a tiny circle of Earth below. Now the plane wings its way toward ground zero. Warning signal is sounded. All observers prepare for the blinding flash of the bomb. Detonation minus 20 seconds. Command of the plane is given to the bombardier. Ground zero dead ahead. The key man now goes into action. Bomb bay door is open. Detonation minus 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We're circling ground zero at radius of 7.5 miles. Altitude one, five, zero, zero, zero feet. Airspeed four, five, zero. Stand by. Roger and over. She's all yours. This is Dr. Martin. Here are the readings. 0.378 negative, second indicator. 1.08 negative. Radiation point four. Over. Roger, proceed according to plan. We'll go and up. Take her in closer. Okay, Dr. Martin.
come in, Tar Baby 2. Come in, Tar Baby 2. We've lost contact, sir. Baker 2, sir. Yes, sir. All patrol craft in test area. This is a mayday. Repeat, this is a mayday. Proceed to segment Baker 17. Search for Tar Baby 2. Baby 7. Wreckage sighted southwest corner Soledad Flats. Ship appears completely demolished. No sign of survivors. Over. Roger Tar Baby 7. Circle wreckage at 1000 feet until arrival of helicopter rescue unit. Dr. Kruger, Colonel Banks speaking. Would you mind coming into my office right away, please? Thank you. As I was saying, our search planes found the wreckage of your husband's plane, Mrs. Martin. A rescue crew was sent out, but... But they must have reached the wreckage hours ago. Why can't they find him? I honestly don't know, Mrs. Martin. Yes, come in. They found the pilot dead in the wreckage. And according to all reports, no one could have bailed out. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Martin. shows no indication of any scars on your body. I must have got it in a crash. Uh, uh, this was surgery. A very skillful incision. I've never had an operation. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. Mr. Briggs. Colonel Bank. How are you, Mr. Briggs? Fine. How are you? Fine. I see the FBI doesn't waste much time. Well, uh, not if we can help it, Colonel. Oh, you know our base surgeon, Major Clift? Sure. How have you been, Major? How do you do? Uh, well, I guess you gentlemen have business to discuss. Oh, no, no. This won't take a minute. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down, please, please, gentlemen. Cigarette. Oh, thank you. I understand you've already talked with Dr. Martin. I just left him. You know... Uh, Colonel, um, according to my files, Dr. Martin is just about the key man on this nuclear project. Yes, along with Dr. Kruger, he is. Mm -hmm. Well, I know they're both good friends and, uh, well, both have knowledge and access to top secret information. 
Well, that's very true, but there's no reason to suspect that oh, they... Oh, we can, uh, we can suspect anything, Colonel. Until Dr. Martin accounts for every minute from the time of the crash. The shock must have caused a mental block. His mind doesn't want to remember the details, the, the origin of the scar on his chest, how he got back to the base under his own power. Did you ever stop to think that perhaps this Dr. Martin isn't really the Dr. Martin? What are you getting at? What I mean is that uh, this man could be an imposter. That's what I've been waiting for. Thanks. Get me Colonel Banks to the base, please. No, no, I'll wait. Oh, yes, Mr. Briggs. Any news on the line you were getting on Dr. Martin? Just heard from Washington. Well, I was wrong. This is our man, all right. His prints and description check right down the line. Now, Here's what I suggest you do. But you're in excellent physical condition, yet you're keeping him in the base hospital. Why? Mrs. Martin, you must realize that your husband is engaged in a highly secret work. If this experience had, well, affected his mind... Are you trying to tell me that Doc is... No, no, no. It's nothing serious, Mrs. Martin. His reflexes are excellent. Except for that one lapse of memory, his mind is perfectly clear. Isn't that natural under the circumstances? Yes. Except for the question of the scar on his chest. I know he didn't have it before the crash. Well, I'm sure he didn't, Mrs. Martin. But you see, it would be impossible for a wound of this size to have healed so quickly and without medical attention. Well, you can't keep him here indefinitely. Well, we don't intend to. Uh, we asked you to come down here because we've decided to let you take him home. Provided you can keep him quiet and he gets enough rest. I understand. Now we'll just have to take that vacation he's been wanting for so long. Vacation? To watch him, you'd think you never heard of one. Yes, he must have asked me a hundred times when the next test was scheduled. He's anxious to take his own readings again. Well, he did have a key part in the planning of these projects. Well, is there anything he should or shouldn't be allowed to do? No. Except... He does need diversion. Anything that won't upset or excite him. I see. Movies, bridge, drives, things like That's that. Right. Well, you're the doctor now. Just see that he gets plenty of rest. Thank you. Goodbye, Colonel. Goodbye. See you later, Major. Sergeant Bandero. Anything I can do for you, Doctor? I wondered if there were any last-minute orders on another atomic test. What do you mean you can't tell me? Sorry, sir. Regulations. I can't give out information to anyone. No, sir. It won't do you any good to come down. All right. We'll see about that. to the 
face right away. Alan, don't you agree with me? I've spent months preparing for the series of tests, and no sergeant is going to push me around now. Well, aren't you going to say anything? No. Look, I know they're ready for another test, and I should be there. Can't you understand that they don't want you around for your own good? I don't need their sympathy. There's nothing wrong with me. Then why are you acting this way? You're all on edge. If you don't slow down, I don't know what's going to happen. You really believe that, don't you? Look, Doug, if you won't take it easy for your own sake, please, do it for mine. You had no right to go ahead without me. And you, Kurt, you didn't tell me either. Why? Orders, Doug. Orders? Nonsense. The least that could have been done would have been to let me know. I'm fine. I could have done my work. I hate to say this, Dr. Martin, but in your present state, you're not considered a very good security risk. Me? A security risk? My present state? What's the matter with me? How long am I to be considered? Only temporarily. The results of the test will be available for your study when you return to work. I am ready, Colonel. To us, you're still a very sick man. My advice to you is to go home and relax, as you were ordered. Relax, relax. And if I don't? Then you'll be confined to the base hospital until you change your mind. Now, what's it going to be? Well, Doctor? Oh, Dr. Martin. I didn't expect you back so soon. Well, haven't you heard? I'm a metal king. Can't even be trusted with my own work. Ah! I'm going to go berserk at any minute. Colonel Banks will fill you in on the details. Now, uh, don't, don't tell me. Let me see. You're, uh, I know, I know. You're Miss uh, Vincent, the secretary I share with, uh, Oh, hmm? Doctor, you can't be serious. Uh, there was no one in your office, so I thought you wouldn't mind. Oh, that's all right. It's all right. As far as I'm concerned, you can take the rest of the day off. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. No, oh, I don't really belong here. I just, uh, just came in to pick up a few personal things from my desk. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Main gate, main gate, please. Just a minute, Doctor. Main gate, Sergeant Powers. Dr. Kruger? Dr. Kruger, Dr. Kruger. No, he checked out. Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. Okay. Sorry to keep you waiting, Doctor. That's all right. Okay, Doctor. Will you sign out, please? We'll post a couple of men outside of Dr. Kruger's office. Give me Colonel Banks at the officers' club. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Dr. Kruger? Yes? My name's Briggs. I'm from the FBI. Briggs. Briggs. Of course. I've heard of you. <laughs> I wonder if you'd mind uh, returning to your office with me. What seems to be the trouble? Oh, just a few things we'd like to straighten out. Concerns me? Well, I'm afraid so, Doctor. And take your own car if you like. I'll meet you there. All right, I will. Papers seem to be intact. Is this all uh, classified information, Doctor? Of course. You know, according to security regulations, that vault should have been locked before you left. But I'm certain I did lock it. All right, then tell me this. Who besides yourself has access to the combination? Well, the Colonel here and Dr. Martin. Dr. Martin. Huh? He was in the building this afternoon. That's right. We saw him in my office. He left around 4 o'clock on orders. He dismissed the secretary a few minutes later, but he... he didn't sign out of here until 20 minutes after you left. After I did? Well, there must be some mistake. I personally checked his office just as I was leaving, and he wasn't there. Do you always do that, Doctor? No, but Dr. Martin has been acting... well... quite strange of late. Yes, he certainly has. His wife telephoned to say that he hadn't come home as usual. I was very much concerned about it. So am I. He still hasn't shown up yet. What kind of pipe tobacco do you use, Dr. Kruger? Me? Why, I don't smoke at all. Did you, Colonel? Cigarettes. What are you driving at? Funny. How long has Dr. Martin been using this brand of tobacco? But I really don't know why. Now, uh, Mrs. Martin, you say you have no idea where he could be at this hour. Well, I know he's never been this late before without telephoning. Well, I hate to ask this, but have you ever had any suspicion that there might be another woman? Certainly not. I'm sorry, Mrs. Martin. Just why are you asking me these questions? Well, let's put it this way. Has he made any new friends lately? You know, people not in the usual group. No, the only people we've seen in months have been connected with the Institute. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, just a moment. It's for you, Mr. Briggs. Oh, thank you. units in Sector 7, Code 4. Repeating, Code 4. Be on the lookout for two-tone coupe. License number 1W67713. Repeating, all units, Code 4. Missing, Dr. Douglas P. as in Paul Mott. Male Caucasian, 32 years of age. Height, 6 foot 3. Weight, 195 pounds. Color of hair, blonde. Color of eyes, blue. Last seen driving away. License number 1W67713. Dr. Martin. What are you doing with this? Any special reason for placing it under this rock?
Where's your phone? Over there behind the bunk. Operator, give me Crestview 95359. All units in Sector 7, Code 4. Repeating, Code 4. Be on lookout for two-tone cafe. License number 1W67713. Operator, you sure you're dialing the right number? Well, try it again, will you? It's my home. There ought to be someone there now. At junction of Highway 66 and Beach, ambulance en route, car 17, code 7, fourth and Robert. Suspects may be on. Repeating, code That's 2 right. to all units. Dr. Douglas P. S. and Paul Mott, male Caucasian, 32 years of age, height 6 foot 3, weight 195 pounds, color of hair blonde, color of eyes blue. Missing, Dr. Douglas P. S. and Paul Mott, male Caucasian. Give me the police, quick. Central. This is Briggs. This is Briggs. Come in. Subject, Dr. Douglas Martin, last seen in Route 61, heading toward North Junction. Stopped at gas station corner of Ridgewood and Mills Road. Acknowledge. Roger. Briggs out. Dr. Martin, you're with friends. You'll be all right. Now, let me go. Let me go. Steady now, steady, Doc. He'll kill everyone. We've got to stop now. Easy, Doug, easy. <clears throat> what did you give him? Sodium amatol. Truth serum to deprive his mind of any imagination. I guess you'll make sense now. I'll get the recorder ready. Can you hear me, Dr. Martin? Yes. Now listen to me. I want you to count backwards from 100. Do you understand? Backwards from 100. 100? 
I was delivering it. Delivering it? But where? To the rocks in Soledad Flats? Yes. To Soledad Flats. And where we crashed. I was delivering it, just as I was ordered. Who ordered you to do this, Dr. Martin? I'll tell you the whole story. I remember we were circling the atomic cloud. So there was an object blowing beneath us at Soledad Flats. We were going down to investigate. Controls jammed. Couldn't pull out. When I regained consciousness, I was on a table. Next thing I knew, they were coming at me. Strange people. Their eyes, uh, those horrible eyes. They didn't speak. I, I could see something strange and eerie pulsating in front of me. Then one of them lowered it toward my chest. It was my own heart. What happened? Here, Doctor. You are the first of your world to be looking at our solar system, the Astron. This is our planet, Astron Delta. It occupies the fourth position in relation to this, our sun. Yes, go on. During the 23rd time rotation, our sun began to die. So during the succeeding generations, as our planet began to cool, Vegetation began to disappear. Our eyes developed to this state to combat the ever-growing darkness. We were forced to migrate. You left your planet? Where? We invaded these neighboring planets. They were nearer to our sun. Feeble attempts to stop us, but we were prepared for such contingencies. And now that our sun is about to completely expire, we must move again in order to survive. Yours is the only planet in this solar system capable of supporting our civilization. This is fantastic. Over a billion of you trying to come here to Earth. We have no alternative. We have been putting our plan to work for some time. At the proper moment, the invasion will be launched from our platforms, which are being readied in space. Nothing can stop us. This is ridiculous. You cannot find your way in or out of this cavern. Do not try to leave.
<laughs> so, you have discovered our menagerie. Don't you think you will be more at ease on this side of the cage? It's horrible. What are you doing here? We are breeding our, shall I say, armies. Those carnivorous insects and animals. Look at them. Their growth is due to a change in their genes. With your next nuclear test, these animals will multiply at a rate beyond imagination. When the time comes, we will unleash them. They will spread to every continent and devour every living thing on the surface of the Earth. What good will that do you? How could you expect to survive better than we? We have provided for that. No, Doctor. Look over there. We will use their bodies to fertilize the soil. Vegetation will rise up in abundance. A new era of civilization will begin. Gamma rays? You see, Doctor. We have arranged for everything. Wait a minute. All this equipment? Our nuclear storage units. To date, we have accumulated several billion electron volts as a result of your atomic explosions. Several billion? I have... Uh... A chain reaction at this point could release enough unstable isotopes to, to create a new and powerful element. Might be impossible to control. True. An element that will never be known by your scientists. I can assure you the strength of this new element will well, be... This is a powder keg. Could go up in any minute. I assure you, Doctor, we have everything under our complete control. What force could possibly be strong enough to harness the... You control your whole operation by electricity. Of course, no generators, no generators. That means you're getting your power from somewhere on the surface. It must be passing through here. You have heard enough, Dr. Martin. Step inside. All right. What do you want from me? You will have access to advanced information relative to the time and strength of the forthcoming atomic tests. What about it? You will provide us with that information as soon as it is available. I see. You're afraid of an overload. You can't tap enough electricity wherever you get it from to control a strong enough charge. You are a clever man, Doctor. Perhaps too clever. And what makes you think I'll give you any information? It is the only way you can save your own life when the time comes. You will be transported to one of our platforms in space and resettled here when our operation is completed. You're asking me to sabotage the entire world, three billion people. They are doomed in any case. Well, I guess there's no alternative. I'll have to do as you say. You are lying, Doctor. Your only wish is to betray us. No. I know. Your thoughts have been recorded. Lie, Detective? Call it what you like. You force me to resort to other methods. I will contact our space station. You are an unwilling subject, Dr. Martin. What? Who are you? I am Vitala. You will listen and obey. No, I... You will listen to my orders and obey. You will listen and obey. Listen and obey. You will remember nothing you have seen or heard here. Nothing but my orders which you will obey. 
Yes. You will obtain the data and bring it to the stone near the place where your plane was wrecked. To the stone. What have you seen or heard here? What have you seen or heard here? Nothing. Repeat my orders. I will obtain the data and bring it to the stone. I did. I took the information to where they told me. I didn't realize I was being mesmerized. Why doesn't somebody say something? Don't you believe me? Kurt, you understand. These giant animals breeding by the millions, they'll devour everything unless we stop them. Of course, Doug, we will. Colonel. Colonel, you've got to arrange to set off another bomb tonight. The strongest charge we have. They're beneath the ground with all their equipment. We can blow them to pieces. Now, wait a minute. A strong charge will overload their units. You don't believe me, Colonel? Major? Kurt? Of course we do. Easy, Doug, easy. You think I'm crazy, all of you. Well, I'm not, do you understand? Everything I said is true. I saw it with my own eyes. Give me a hand, Doug. Now, let me go. Let me go. Steady, steady, steady. Take it easy now. Take it easy. We'll talk this whole thing over. What are you doing to me now? And just rest quietly. That's it. Martin should be along any minute now. She went for their car. What'll I tell her? Well, he's in a state of shock. Tell her he's resting quietly. If you'll excuse me, I think I'd better wait for her at the information desk. Well, Dr. Martin seems to be indestructible, except for those hallucinations. Those weren't hallucinations, Colonel. Under the influence of sodium amytol, a patient loses all control of his imagination. Well, then he shouldn't be able to fabricate those stories. That's right. Major, you're not trying to tell us that everything he said was true. Look, gentlemen, I can only give you the medical facts. As for the rest, you'll have to decide for yourself. Excuse me, please. Dr. Kruger. Chilly, isn't it? Oh, Mr. Briggs, you startled me. I didn't expect to see anyone here. Well, uh, neither did I, Doctor. Well, I suppose you want me to explain why I'm here. Mm-hmm. I want to believe Doug. We've worked together a long time. Anyway, I just had to come out here and check for myself. Check what, Doctor? For an entrance or an exit to the caverns he described. I'm afraid you're wasting your time. Have a cigarette, Doctor? No, thank you. See, we've already covered the entire area. We couldn't find a thing. Then, what about that scar? I'd like to see you disprove that. Oh, Mrs. Martin. Oh. How is he, Doctor? Oh, he's resting fine. I think he'll be all right. How's the car?
about Keep it. Keep away from me. Keep away, I say. Stop. Let me go. They're after me. Nobody thirsty you, Dr. Martin. Keep away. Doc, he's trying to help you. I don't need any help. I, I want to see Kurt right away. Now you control yourself. And I'll call him just as soon as you get back to your room. Now you get back into bed and I'll call Dr. Kruger. Uh, I've got to figure something out before he gets here. I need a pencil, some paper, and a slide rule. I'll see that you get it. Oh, can I have Dr. Kruger, please? <laughs> Dr. Kruger speaking. Oh, yes, Major. How is he? All right, I'll be over in a few minutes. Is there anything wrong? He's much better. Imagine he's even started working. He asked for paper and a slide rule. That's interesting. Wonder what he's up to. Formulas, equations. Anyway, whatever he says, pretend to agree with him. Major Cliff's orders. Of course. Doug. Doug Kurt's here. Hello, Doug. In just a second, I'm almost finished. I'll take your hat. Thank you. Kurt, let's face it. I know that you all think there's something wrong with me. No, of course not. No, I, I wouldn't blame you after the story I told last night. Well, frankly, you did have us a little worried asking that the bomb be dropped because of what you said. <laughs>
Come back there. Let's go. Where's the driver of this car? He went into the building. Walking to something, mister? Where are the switches that control the total that class area? I said, cut it. Now the next one. 